In just a few days, we're gonna be taking our six month old trips on their first ever international long haul flight. Send good vibes our way that it all goes smoothly. But of course, before we head to the airport, I need to pack. So I figured let's do that together in today's vlog. I wanna share what we're taking and also what we're going to be leaving behind for this trip. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Al. I'm a twin mum to Revy and Rue. I share new videos every Tuesday and every Saturday, sharing my journey following an active, healthy lifestyle as a mum of two. And today's video is going to be super fun because we're preparing for our first ever international flight. We are flying from where we live in the South Island of New Zealand, Christchurch, and we're making our way over to the United States. Of course, if you want to see all of the chaos ensue, make sure you're following me on my Instagram. I'll leave it linked in the description box below. I post there every single day. I also have tons of healthy, yummy, easy to make recipes on my highlights and lots of tips and tricks as a twin mum as well. Our journey is going to be two parts. First, we're going to fly from Christchurch up to Auckland, which is in the North Island of New Zealand. So that's a domestic flight. And then once we get to Auckland, we have a little bit of a layover and then we're going to be moving into the international terminal and taking our first international flight. Ah, I'm so excited because we haven't flown internationally in so long, obviously with the pandemic, and we never intended for our first international flight to be with two infants, twin infants that are six months old. But we have flown with them one other time. If you want to check out my packing vlog from that trip where we flew from Christchurch to Hamilton, which is a city in the North Island of New Zealand, that flight was about two hours, just over two hours from memory. And we took a bunch of stuff on that trip. And thinking back, it was actually a really good test for us because we were able to test out a lot of things to see if they were helpful for us while traveling or if they honestly didn't make our life any easier and they should have been left at home. So this packing video is going to be a little bit different because I'm going to compare what I took in that trip with what I'm taking on this trip. The packing list that I'm going to be referring to in this video is on my phone and I'm referencing it from my Instagram. It's saved to my travel highlights. So make sure you go there and check it out if you're wanting to use the same one for an upcoming trip you have too. Right now I'm in the spare room which is aka packing central. It's a little bit chaotic. I'm going to be referring to some categories on my phone, which is on the packing list. And I found that by dividing up my trip into categories, it made my life a lot easier and just trying to think about what items would be helpful for those particular categories. So for this trip, I have stroller, diaper bag, travel slash transport, outfits, bath time, diaper changes, sleep, meal time, and pool days. Obviously the things that I'm taking are relevant to our twins being six months old. So if you have an infant that's around the same age and stage, you might find that helpful. Or if your infant is smaller, our first trip with the twins was at four months old. I'll leave the link to that video in the cards above and the description box below so you can refer to that too. I have listed here on the screen all of the things that we took last time. And the biggest changes to this trip are that the stroller itself is its own category. I have decked out our stroller to the nines. And the reason why I've done this is this trip is quite different from our earlier trip to Hamilton. We're going to be out and about some days, possibly all day or definitely long periods of the day. We're going to cities that are primarily walking cities. We're also going to be taking the twins to a theme park or a couple of theme parks. So having everything on hand really accessible in our stroller is going to make our life so much easier. It does mean that there's going to be a fair bit of packing space that is going to be dedicated to our stroller. So because of that, I have filmed a dedicated stroller video, which is going to be coming out after this one. I'll leave it linked in the description box below once it's live and also in the cards above because you might be watching this once it's already there. If you want to see some tips and tricks for preparing a stroller for travel, 
make sure you check out that video. The other big change for this trip is we are not taking our capsules. Our capsules are our baby or infant car seats. We've decided that we're going to hire them because there's only one place that we're going where we will be driving and renting a car ourselves. Everywhere else we can take public transport or we can hire an Uber or a Lyft with infant car seats. But Definitely for travel and transport, it's really, really important that you get the right things because it makes your life so much easier when your infant can nap on the go with you if you can't get back to your hotel or the place that you're staying. So because of that, we are taking our snooze shades, which are basically sun shades that are blackout. They're completely breathable really really safe for baby and it just provides a nice kind of blackout area for them to have a nap in their stroller. We're also taking white noise machines. We have one for each baby, they're always attached to our stroller. We use them at night as well so we transfer them from the stroller into their cribs so that white noise can be playing. They are rechargeable, they last forever, you can adjust the volume. Honestly, chef's kiss, you need these. Instead of a pram blanket or a stroller blanket, we're going to be bringing with us these cozy little onesies. They're like sheep onesies and they're super cute, super cuddly, super cozy. And this way we can put the twins in those if it's cooler at night with their clothes on underneath. And that way they can stay nice and toasty, but we don't have to have the hassle of carrying a blanket around with us. It's Editing Owl coming to you from the future. I realized when I was covering travel and transport that I forgot to include these. These are the protective earmuffs that the babies wear. We keep them in this little case because we always have them in our stroller, but they are amazing on the plane. I put the earmuffs on each of the babies and they fell asleep. It was magical. Definitely a must for traveling with infants. The next category is bath time. We took with us to Hamilton this inflatable bath that I got off of Amazon. By the way, everything we're taking, I will leave linked in the description box below and also my blog post on my website, alherself.com, which gives you some more details as well. So if you are looking for these items, just follow those links and hopefully that helps you out. But genuinely, the inflatable bath was such a lifesaver. Yes, absolutely, if you don't want to take an inflatable bath, you can always shower with your baby, but some days you just might not feel like getting into the shower or getting wet yourself. And also you might have a baby like ours who love a bath. They love splashing around in the bath. We found this inflatable bath just to be perfect. We were able to put it in the shower, fill it up with water, pop the babies in there one at a time. They could splash around, be bathed off, and then it also kept us up to date with their regular bedtime bath time routine. Our twins are used to having a bath, so it just kind of helped them with adjusting into the fact that, oh, it's bath time, we're gonna be going to sleep soon. If you are staying at a place that has a bath, then that also might be easy for you. But a lot of hotel rooms, at least that we looked at, didn't have a bath, that was a guarantee. We're also gonna be staying at some places with friends and family, they don't have a bath, so having our inflatable bath with us is going to be perfect. The things we took last time for bath time, we are cutting these out. So this time, because we're going to be traveling further away, and yeah, it'll just be easier for us to have as few things as possible. We're not going to be taking our own towels, our own flannels, even though I love those and they're nice and soft for the babies, we can just use the ones in the hotel. For nappy changes, what we took last time is pretty much exactly what we're taking this time. We are packing some nappies. We have our favorite nappies in the entire world. They are the Noopy nappies. Honestly, these nappies have contained so many blowouts. I don't know how. We have tried other nappies when we were on our trip. We tried other brands of nappies did not contain what the Noopy does. So I love them, but we can't take a ton, obviously. We can only take some over. I have packed my carry-on to the brim with them. I'm taking way more than we need just because you don't want to be caught out. But when we're over in the States, we will stock up on some ones locally. For sleep, we took a bunch of stuff with us last time as part of this category. And I got asked so many questions on my Instagram about how we found those things and if we would take them again. The only things that we are not taking are our outlet socks and we're also not taking any blankets. 
Our twins also don't need to be swaddled, so those are staying at home. Instead, we are taking sleep bags because our twins have been unswaddled, their arms are now out when they sleep, and the bag basically is their blanket or their duvet, all in one. And the reason why we're not taking the outlet socks is we found it was a little bit of a pain to set up somewhere else. They must be connected to Wi-Fi to work. So that means that Dave had to do all of that. I mean, I could have done it too, but one of us has to do a big setup with them and it just was inconvenient. We already don't have a lot of time, so we figured we would leave those at home. The outlet is a little sock. It's kind of straps around their foot and it monitors their heart rate and their oxygen levels. And if anything was to drop, it alerts you on your phone or on the device so you know that something's happening. The best things we found for sleep were our travel cots and also the slumber pod. I got a lot of flack from some people for packing the slumber pod. You either loved it or you hated it. It was very divisive. I love it. Yes, it definitely takes up a lot of room in your bag, packing too but it totally saved us while we were away. The room we were staying in in Hamilton when we were there was not blackout at all. We could not have brought enough blackout sheets to block out the different windows in that room. So there would have always been light and our babies really need a dark space to be able to have a good sleep. The slumber pod works by being assembled over your crib and it creates a nice, cozy, dark, black space for them but it's also breathable and there's a space in the top if you want to insert a monitor or a camera and there's also space in there as well for a fan we have our stroller fans which is included in my stroller setup video so we get so we're able to put those stroller fans in our slumber pods and you can always unzip them as well if you want to peek in check on your baby our travel cribs are amazing really easy to assemble, super lightweight, and really cozy for the babies. So they have one each. The reason why we chose to purchase travel cots is because there's not always a guarantee that you'll be able to find two available cribs at an accommodation. Definitely finding one can be easier, but even when we're looking and making our reservations, we wouldn't be able to be guaranteed even one let alone two. So having our own is so much easier. And as I said, we're staying with friends and family for this trip as well at different points. And they don't have two cribs available as well for two babies. So it just makes sense that we have our own. Another benefit to traveling with our own cribs is that the babies are familiar with that sleep environment. So it's really easy for them to fall asleep and stay asleep, fingers crossed. For meal time, these are the things that we took with us last time. And a lot of the stuff is coming with us, but we're also bringing some additional items. So this category has expanded because our twins are six months old. They're not properly on solids yet, but we have been introducing them to them. And I don't know whether or not we will continue with that while we're away or we'll pause it and continue with it when we get back. But I just want to be prepared either way. Last time on our trip, we took more bottles. We just allocated more of our bag space to bottles. This time we're taking fewer bottles. We're also packing with us formula. I know that there is a formula shortage in the States, which does concern me. So we're taking over as much as possible and then hopefully we can find some that's suitable for our babies once we arrive. I'm taking my travel breast pump and charger. I have two breast pumps. I have one that's a hospital grade pump that pumps both sides at the same time. And then I have a little portable one. I love both of them for different reasons. I definitely get more output with my hospital grade pump, but the travel pump is good, even though I might not get quite as much. My plan is just to pump a couple of times a day when I'm at the hotel or near a place like if we're staying with friends and family that have a fridge, because I'm not going to bring with us an ice pack and a cooler to do it out and about. My milk supply has changed so much as the twins have gotten older. So that might be phasing its way out anyway. I'm not sure, I'm staying open, I'm staying flexible with it, but that's my plan anyway, to not take a cooler and a freezer pack. We're also going to be taking with us a bottle brush to clean the bottles on the go. I'm still figuring out a way for us to clean them on the plane, but 
anyway, future me problem. My current plan is to pack a little bit of washing detergent and take that through security with us with some water and that way we can clean the bottles in the toilet and the plane but just not using the water from the toilet. We're also making sure that we're taking with us our formula dispenser. These are really handy little canisters. Ours has three serves of formula. You just twist the top around and then pop that into your bottle, add water or vice versa, sorry, water first, then the formula. And we also make little baggies of formula. So we put formula into little Ziploc bags and then that way it's an individual serve formula for that baby. It can be a little bit messier we've found taking the formula from the baggie into the bottle but it still works. We are also taking with us these stainless steel bottles. These bottles either keep water super cold for hours and hours and hours on end or hot for hours and hours and hours on end. So our plan is once we're through security, we wanna fill these up with water, some boiling water and some cooler water to make kind of a warm water sort of combo. And then that water we can use during the flight. Dave and I are going to be sitting separate from each other. And that part I'm a little bit nervous about. We have booked a bassinet seat each, so we're in a row of four, and we are sitting each on the end of the aisle. So there are two people in between us, and we've checked, those seats are now gone. So I assume that there are two people sitting there, and that means that essentially Dave and I will be flying solo, looking after a baby each. Of course, we'll be there to help each other if one of us needs to go to the restroom. We'll be able to pass the second baby to the other person, so we'll be able to sort of swap out that way. But we each need to have a pack on the plane. So we each need to have our own bottles. We each need to have our own diaper bag supplies. We each need to have our own water so that we can quickly make up bottles. Definitely makes it a little bit more challenging, but also, you know, super fun to overcome those. We're also going to be taking bibs, 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 bibs. This was one of my biggest take homes from our last trip to Hamilton. If you have a good bib, it saves an outfit. Our babies wore bibs non-stop. They were so much easier to clean than having to clean their clothes. So we are taking a lot of bibs and I'm also going to be taking this messy top. It's like a waterproof wipe away top. So if the babies do have solids during the day, we'll be able to pop those on them. They come with a little travel pouch, which makes it super easy to take them with us. And that way they can just pop those on, pop a bib on and we can feed them solids. I'm also packing two spoons, baby spoons. So we'll be able to feed them food using those spoons. And the final item in this category is our lobster chairs. I love these chairs. Our friends had them with their baby and I always looked at it and thought it was the coolest thing. Kind of freaked me out though, because the way in which you assemble it is it screws onto a table or a bench and the baby just sits in there, which is so cool for your baby because they get to sit at the table with you. So many high chairs, they're put to the side and they're not part of the table so this way our babies can be with us on the table so we're going to have those with us and they just can be folded away and you just carry them in a little carry pouch it's so easy for playtime we're taking the same thing that we took with us to hamilton we took a play mat and this play mat is awesome because there are little activities attached to the play mat it's an extra large play mat which is big enough for both of our babies and our babies are rolling now as well so it needs to be extra big i'm also taking toys I made sure that I picked up two new toys, one for each baby that we can show them on the plane. Hopefully it's something fun for them that they can enjoy. Nappy bag is another thing that I'm taking. The nappy bag is its own video because it was so comprehensive making sure that we had everything for the flight. So if you want to check out that video about what's in my nappy bag and why, I'll leave that video linked for you to check out after this one. The final category is outfits. This is what we took last time. The changes that we're making this trip are, I have organized the outfits into days. I thought it was just easier if I bag up their outfits, put the top and the bottom together and just label it. So I have labeled the outfits Monday through Sunday. Obviously it's flexible, like, you know, if they wear a different day on that day, that's no problem at all. But it's just a way of kind of keeping things contained and it makes it really easy for us to dress our babies. We're also taking singlets, also taking with us some cooler weather options. I don't really know what the temperature will be like when we're over in the States. It's 
the end of summer coming into fall or autumn but it can still be pretty hot especially for us when we are not acclimatized to those temperatures it's pretty chilly where we live so I want to have options for the babies I'm only taking one pair of long pants for them and a couple of sweaters we also have some long onesies which are your best friend when traveling because a onesie is an all-in-one outfit especially if you get the ones with the enclosed toes so their whole feet are just in they can't kick off their socks we're taking some of those for them to sleep in we're also taking some short onesies short sleeve and short pants I guess for them to sleep in if it's warmer the babies will also have sunglasses I cannot stress to you how good it is to have sunglasses. When you are wearing your baby in a front pack, especially if they're facing forward, and we are taking our front packs, I think I included that in our travel transport part. If I didn't, make sure that you pack a carrier in that category. When you are going through the airport, the best and easiest way to get through the airport is by wearing your baby through security. You do have to take them out of the carrier, but oh my gosh, if you're waiting in a long line, holding your baby for ages can be really tiring. But if we're wearing our babies outside, out and about, because they love to look around, be held, it's great for them to wear sunglasses because then they don't have to spend the entire time squinting because the sun is in their eyes. Cannot recommend sunglasses enough. We also have jackets in case it's cold. We're taking socks and we're taking shoes for the babies. <laughs> when we go to Disneyland, which is a theme park we're visiting, the babies have to wear shoes for some attractions, which is so funny because they're not actually like walking anywhere. It's just the rules. So we've packed shoes for our babies. <laughs> I also plan ahead of time their travel outfits and I have these set aside that they're ready to go and I don't use them until the day so it just makes sure that I don't have to panic about washing them and I found that the best travel outfit for us was a onesie that was all encased so that their toes were encased everything like that the zip I found was so crucial that there was a two-way zipper that way if we needed to change the babies we could just unzip from the bottom up and they would still be nice and cozy on top and then we also put them in a sweater the reason for that is right now in New Zealand where we live it's quite cold so it just keeps them nice and toasty and cozy the final category is pool days and this is so exciting because we'll actually be able to take the babies swimming for the first time and I cannot wait we were so so lucky and things for twins kindly sent us an inflatable twin pool toy that they can sit in in the pool and it works for two babies. My understanding is that you can lift one baby out and the other baby won't tip. Obviously we will both be in the pool with them so they will not be unsupervised on this. But I bought from Things for Twins our Twinsy feeding pillow which has been such a godsend. I used it in the early days when the twins were newborns and I was tandem feeding them. Now I tend to use it as a place to settle them both and, bo and feed them both a bottle at the same time because it works so good for that. So Things for Twins saw that I was sharing them on my Instagram and they kindly sent me this pool toy as a thank you. I cannot cannot recommend them enough if you're having twins. That is a really comprehensive list and of course not everybody needs all of those things. We just think that that's going to make our life a lot easier traveling with two infants. And if you want to follow our journey on our trip, make sure you hit subscribe to my YouTube channel because I'll be uploading lots of travel vlogs including what our experience is like flying long haul an international flight with two newborns as well as tips and tricks for traveling, napping on the go, everything in between. So make sure you hit subscribe and also hit the notification bell so you don't miss any future videos. If you enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up. The support means the world to me. I can't wait to see you in the next video. Thanks again for watching. Bye!